What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Waifu Ju tier list video. It is our first ever official tier list for MLB to show 23 and today we are going over every single card that is going to be in Team Affinity 1 in MLB to show 23 and we are talking about all of the captains and charisma cards. I have a couple of honorable mentions for the earlier ones but those ones for the most part aren't really pushing the needle in any direction and you just take them as you will and for the teams you like and the cards that you want to use but I'll be going over all these cards because a lot of them are great and a lot of them are not so great. So we're going to get into it and let me know if you guys agree with my list or if you think it's horrible, if you think it's great, or any of these cards that you think are really, really good and you've been doing well with. Let me know down below and let's get right into the list, guys. Honorable mention number one is going to be 87 JD Martinez. A lot of power. This card's pretty cool. Another honorable mention is this 89 Chili Davis. New legend switch hitter. He can't, def he can't defend like at all, but he's a decent little hitter. Next, we got Lance McCullers. This card's actually better than like a majority of the pitchers in the Captain and Charisma. So if this was a full, full tier list with like all 120 cards, he would actually be pretty high up. This is actually a good one. We got this 89 Trevor Story. He's a decent little card. Nothing too crazy, but uh, Trevor's are fun. With those honorable mentions being said, we now have our number 60th card in the Team Affinities from all the captains and charismas. I will want to say as well, the captains are not going to include their captain boosts. That'll be a fully separate video where I'll be talking about every single captain in the game and how I feel they are, not only in their card, but with their boosts as well. But just on the card alone and where you get it, Zach Greinke is going to be the worst team affinity higher diamond, quote unquote. He just doesn't throw very hard. His per nines are really, really bad. This was a veteran take it we're happy you're playing one more year zach so here's a card next up is josiah gray the per nines are way better but the pitch mix sucks he throws a little bit harder so he's definitely better than Granky, but not by much next we have paul seawald i wanted to say this was the worst card in it but just the fact that he is a high diamond reliever with decent per nines makes him better than the others but his pitch mix is maybe the worst he's a really bad edwin next we have 92 shane bieber it's a shame that bieber never gets a good card but like it is what it is. The Cy Young and Triple Crown winner kind of gets disrespected by SDS every time he gets one. This card is just not very good. Differentials, per nines, nothing stands out. And his delivery is easy to read. Next up, another reliever that's not very good is Liam Hendricks. His per nines are actually worse than Seawald, but he has a different pitch. At least he has three pitches and he throws harder. So that counts for something, I guess. And Liam Hendricks is really low on this list number 55 on this list is shane mcclanahan a lefty with a bad pitch mix at least he throws hard his per nines are meh uh he's not really that good mcclanahan's never really are it kind of sucks because he's really good in real life number 54 is adam wainwright this guy throws absolute who he throws 88 to 90 miles an hour if he's lucky if the sun is shining and the rays are beaming down straight on your face maybe he'll hit 91 that's pretty rare his per nines are not very good but wainwright has at least a sneaky delivery so like he's at least better than the other guys but not by much number 53 on the list is clayton kershaw i'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna hate me for this but he only throws 90 something he's just not what his good cards usually are I will say his pitcher clutch is nice, so with runners in scoring position, he might get a lot better, but the velo is just way too low. But Kershaw is a little glitchy, so if you can never hit him, then you won't hit this one either. Number 52 is Joey Votto. Joey Votto is the first hitter on this list, and boy, is he not good. He only plays first. He's slow. He's not a good fielder. He only hits right. He's good, and he has low contact. It's as bad as bad gets. Joey, eesh. Next up is Seth Brown. Seth Brown is actually worse contact-wise than Joey Votto. So you're like, why is he better? Well, he's better because he's fast. He has 73 speed, so at least he is better and his fielding is okay. So at least he's good at something. And he has other positions. So it's like, maybe he's good. Not really. Next up, we have Alec Manoa. Probably the best of the bad starting pitchers. The sinker helps him. He kind of has a weird delivery, even though it's four pitches. He's better than he probably should be. Same Alec we kind of are used to, though. And he is marginally better than our first Charisma Series, 97 overall Tristan McKenzie. The pitch mix is just way too basic. He doesn't throw hard enough. The per nines are the only reason that he's even this high on the list. And this is not very high. Back to back, we have another Charisma card with Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan is just Tristan McKenzie that throws the same, but he has way better pitcher clutch. And that matters. So he's better. Next up is somebody you guys might have assumed would be way higher in this list, but he is not. 92 captain Shohei Otani is bad. 80 per nines. He doesn't have outlier. 
I don't think Otani's delivery is that good anyway, and his hitting abilities simply don't matter anymore with the DH. So we're judging him strictly off a of pitcher now, and he is not a very good one. He is low on this list. Next, we have Zach Gallon. Zach Gallon has the same pitch mix as Otani, except he has a circle change instead of a splitter, which I do think is better. He has a better delivery than Otani, and he has better per nines than Otani. So that means he's better than Otani nice another pitcher if you guys have noticed i do not think these pitchers are all that good sandy alcantara the reigning cy young 69 k per nine means foul balls are going to be happening way too often he is outlier on the sinker and not the four seam which means they are the same speed and that sucks pitch differentials are really okay that k per nine is gonna be brutal you're not gonna strike anybody out and if you're not striking people out you're not getting people out in this game so another hitter another first baseman 92 pete alonzo i really don't value guys who just play first because there's so many good ones his power is actually really good but he's slow he doesn't field well and he has low contact he is low on this list A slightly better version of him though is miguel cabrera he is even slower 10 speed is actually unusable but his contact's pretty high this is a pity card just like they give zach Greinke. he's better than pete i guess but the power is lower but more rounded so there he is next up is a card that i really wanted to be better but he is just simply not 92 adley rushman the contact in power versus righties is good you're gonna see righties most of the time so that's definitely nice but he is borderline unusable versus lefties he's only 58 speed which i feel like he should have been faster and the clutch and vision and just stuff versus lefties is not gonna get it done and there's better catchers simply i mean it's just way better ones so at least low next up we have 92 aaron judge this one hurts me to make because i'm a big yankee fan and i love me some mvp aaron judge but this guy has 47 reaction and 50 speed with 72 fielding in the outfield i don't know what they conjured up to make this judge this bad but he is not very good i still love his swing he's a little too tall for some people but i like it but with that fielding he is just not good outside of a dh spot and there are way better dhs in this program next pitcher we have hunter green he only has three pitches but he has outlier and just off the fact that he is outlier means if you're playing somebody who can't hit the fastball he is going to dominate him so just off that alone he is way better than a lot of the other pitchers in this list but it doesn't mean he's very good so another charisma way too low number 37 on this list is going to be brandon crawford this card actually has really good hitting stats his swing is pretty nice plays good defense you're like why is he this low 27 speed is actually unusable at shortstop and then he loses a shield when he goes to second or third base and really at second he's not usable either so now you got to put him at third he's actually a decent third baseman having that speed in the infield is like really 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 difficult so i don't like him next up we have manny machado he is definitely a beneficiary of having at least a little bit better speed he has 44 which is almost double of brandon crawford his hitting stats are a little bit worse but manny's swing is amazing as you guys know and his live quirks definitely help make up for it he's a really good fielder but he's not a whole lot better than crawford he's just faster next up we have jose altuve and i wanted to put this card higher but 47 arm strength is actually gonna like cause you to not get out sometimes although he has the ability to get to a ball with his speed his defense and his arm strength are actually gonna make it get to the ball and then you're not going to actually make the play or make it smoothly his hitting stats are really good though and jose altuve is small with a great swing so if you like his swing you like him next up we have byron buxton they're turning byron buxton into the old joey gallo he's just right-handed joey gallo that's fast at this point really low contact really high power he has a good swing he plays good defense this one's just fast instead of joey but otherwise like that contact is really really rough and that clutch is even lower somehow so he's not my favorite but he is a defensive specialist in the outfield next up we have jt rio muto this is a way better balanced card then Adley Rushman, he hits everybody pretty evenly. The power versus left is still to be desired, but at least he's usable versus them. 99 arm behind the dish is the only really defense that matters back there. And he has 83 speed, so it's a pretty balanced defensive catcher. He's not my favorite in the game, but he's definitely an option that if you're using, I'm not mad at. Next up, we have Andrew McCutcheon. I am shocked with how good this card really is, but he mashes lefties. He's not the worst versus righties, despite the contact still being pretty low. The speed is up. You, if you guys know his card from last year 99 cutchin was amazing he has that swing so he's gonna be pretty good and if you love mccutcheon he's back in the pirates that's a w for them w for baseball next up is our first hitter from the charisma series and that is going to be 97 cabrian hayes cabrian hayes isn't bad i think his power is just a little bit too low his arm strength is definitely low and he only plays third having one position is definitely going to take you down a couple notches in my book you know if you're only playing third and you're not the best there then what are you good for so cabrian is this low he is the worst hitter of the charisma series in my opinion 
Next up, we have Bobby Wood Jr. This might be pretty controversial. I don't think Bobby Wood is very good at all. Um, he has decent hitting stats and he's fast, but he's a really, really bad fielder. He's 65 fielding over there at shortstop. If you get him P5, he gets a lot more usable. At least the arm strength is really good, but you can't move him to third because then he becomes a common fielder and that is not going to be usable really at all, especially when there's better hitters at third that have common defense. Having this low defense at short is rough. This is definitely what people wanted their G to be and uh, they got it in Bobby Wood Jr. So he could have been decent, but they, they had to nerf him somewhere. And above both of them, we actually do have one of the 92 overall captain series, and it is Austin Riley. Austin is a way better hitter than both of those guys. He has a, just about as good of a swing, maybe a better one. 72 speed is just fine over there at third base. 71 fielding is great for third base. His arm is leaving a little to be desired, but he can play first and left field also. So the versatility between not just one side of the field, but we're going to the outfield even, which I wouldn't put him there, but it's not the worst option. And his hitting is just going to be significantly better than the guys before him. So I think Austin Riley is actually better than Bobby and Cabrian Hayes, but let me know what you guys think about it. Next up, we have Taylor Ward. The only reason Taylor Ward is even like above some other guys is because he is versatility and the speed, 92 speed, and he can play right, third, left, and center. If this card could play catcher, he would actually be way higher on the list. The takeaway is catcher secondary. That's such a drag, and it is very lame and not very cash money. The hitting is okay. He gets above 100 contact at P3, but that's a long time to be using this card. I don't think he does anything overly well out there in right field that a lot of other guys don't already do, but he is not a bad option, and he fits the Angels theme team, so... There he is. Next up, we have Christian Walker. Christian Walker has an amazing swing. The problem is his stats are not really good enough to compete with other first basemen in the game. He's definitely not going to be playing left field with 52 speed. The reaction and fielding are actually pretty good, so you can maybe get away with it, but the speed is a little low, and the arm strength is even lower than you would ever imagine. So if you want a first baseman that has 99 defense, this is your guy, but that's really about all he provides that is better than anybody else. Next up, we have Jeff McNeil, the flying squirrel, the guy who was not very good for Team USA. This is a weird Jeff McNeil. He usually gets some like pyramid scheme numbers looking for his stats and they're kind of more balanced than they ever really are. His high contact, low power, low power is not really gonna get it done this year. He does have a lot of positions, which is really nice, but he's slow. So he's not really gonna be great at second base or the outfield and he's just, not an ideal first or third baseman you kind of want some power and some boppers out of those positions and that's probably the positions he's best at nothing i would write home or suggest to any of you and next up we have tommy edmund initially i thought this card was way worse than he was and he isn't great but tommy edmund is a switch hitter which obviously has a lot of value his speed is very good gets over 90 at just parallel one and two and again all the positions he's able to play Pretty solid defense at every position besides just primary, which is kind of funny. 99 fielding, but you're not going to want to have him at shortstop because of the 65 arm. So I'd put him at second base, third base, or even the outfields are not horrible options for him since I don't think arm strength in the outfield is as important as some people do. But this Tommy Edmund, the versatility and the elite defense are pretty much everywhere is going to be nice. So that's the only reason... He's better than some of the other guys. And shout out to the switch hitting team. It's really good for day one. Speaking of the switch hitting team, another 92. This is our last 92 hitter, but he is definitely better than all those other cards. He has a better swing than pretty much everybody else on the list to this point. And similar to Tommy Edmund, he has positional versatility. He plays left, center, right, second, and third base, which is really, really good for a card of this type of magnitude. His contact's really high at P5. He gets over 100 for both sides. And Ian Happ has just one of those swings. If you guys have ever used them in BR, you know that whatever his stats show, he's just a little bit better. His fielding's gonna be fine wherever you put him. Arm strength is a concern, but he doesn't play shortstop, so that's fine. And throw him at second base. And this is one of the best second basemen you can get, especially super early on. So I think this Ian Happ is better than every other hitter so far. Next, we got Reese Hoskins. Reese is cool. I mean, his power and his hitting is okay. I wish he had more contact versus right, but there's only so much you can do. He's only going to play first base, and that's why he's this low. His hitting stats are actually pretty good, but this is a first base or DH, and there's way better DHs on this list. So he's going to be where he is next up we have 97 charlie blackman this card at first i thought was kind of good and then the more i looked at it the more i liked it less reverse splits for him is kind of weird his swing is amazing 99 arm makes zero sense but you're not going to use him in the outfield because his defense sucks and his reaction is even worse a weird statted card but he has a good swing so if you want to use him dh it is next we have adelise garcia i had a weird feeling about placing this card because he's actually balanced and you can use him in the outfield but I think his hitting is like 
pretty bad and his swing is like even worse so i didn't really know where to put him and this is probably one of my more hot takes on the list but i have at least decently low compared to some of the outfielders that we're about to have in front of him just like ronald acuna Another guy that a lot of people might think is way higher. I'm not a, as high on a Ronald Acuna swing as maybe a lot of you are. And this card is not very good in the outfield. You see the 90 speed and the 78 fielding, you're like, oh, that can make it work. But 56 reaction, if you guys have played any online games, you know how bad reaction actually matters this year. And that makes him unusable really in the outfield at all unless you're just hiding him and left and then his defense gets even worse he's not quite the hitter to be a dh either so he's kind of in a weird limbo where they juice the speed but the reaction and defense are just not gonna get it done in the outfield and defense in the outfield really matters this year so all right after ronald acuna jr is going to be the first of a string of pitchers the first is going to be this lefty 92 captain card for chris sale chris sale is one of those pitchers every year that if you are good at hitting he is not going to be very good but he has a weird arm angle he throws pretty hard and his pitches are very deceptive despite it only being a four seam slider circle change and sinker he is just one of those kind of freaky cards that can really sneak up on you despite not really having a meta pitch mix or anything like that the for nines are good enough i just don't think he's as good as the next type of pitcher is coming up but he definitely deserves a spot in the top 20. next up i have corbin burns and this might be another hot take but uh, you know he's above a lot of charisma cards corbin burns has just gotten easier and easier to hit as time has gone on this card does not have any good control like better corbins have had and so better corbins have had outlier on cutters and outlier on sinkers and way better control and they haven't done well so i think he's good but i do think there are a couple pitchers better than him but um, he's definitely good and i would give him a shot if you need to fill out that rotation next up we have martin perez's 92 i do think this is better than patrick corbin martin perez is a very sneaky card that people don't ever see or haven't seen over the last couple of years he has a sinker cutter he throws decently hard he doesn't have a slider and that's the one knock i have on this card but if you use that cutter like one he'll be pretty decent i wish the per nines were better otherwise he'd be way up higher on this list if he had like 90s oof he'd be chef's kiss and then next up we have marcus stroman i don't really know if marcus stroman is going to be better or worse than corbin burns but all i know is he has better per nines he doesn't throw as hard but People seen less Strowman than they have Burns in the last couple years. So we're going to put him above, but really he's in the mix. That's why I put all three of these cards near each other because I do think they are pretty similar. And Strowman is really me. Next up, we have our first bona fide DH of the list is going to be Giancarlo Stanton. This guy absolutely rakes. He's going to have 125, 125 power versus both sides at P1. High clutch high discipline even his contact isn't too bad for a card of this type the issue is he is unusable in the outfield with 58 reaction and 19 speed and the only reason he's even this low is because even as a hitter 19 speed is detrimental so he would be higher on this list but 19 speed is just like an actual asterisk that you got to look at and take into account Plus, not everybody likes to swing. I do, though. Next, you have Solaire. He is literally Stanton, but worse in terms of the hitting stats. But he has 57 speed, and that just makes him better. And he has a universally more liked swing than Stanton. So he is one spot better. Next on this list, after the string of DHs with Giancarlo and Solaire, we have Joey Manises. Manises is also kind of a DH. He can definitely play first base, though, and he has such a good swing in this game. The hitting stats are a little bit worse than the other two in terms of the power but he is definitely more balanced he has good contact the power is good enough it gets over to 110 against lefties at p5 he can play first base and that's the main reason that he is above solaire and stanton because he can actually play a position and that dh spot and he has balance across the board so he's um not terrible but you do not want to play him really at third or left field so joey next we have jock peterson i didn't know what to do with this jock at first i rated them pretty highly because he's definitely just a dh the only really really positive thing about him is that he can play first so if you really like jock and you really want to use him he can go ahead and play first base for you but i do think you probably have better options over there at first anyway so if you're putting him a dh there's definitely better lefties in this list but um he's not usable in the outfield at all so you're gonna have him at first and he's not even the best over there. next up we have christian yelich he's more balanced of a hitter than jock peterson but he's way faster you could actually use him in the outfield if you really wanted to left field is definitely his best position 
Uh, reaction is not the best, but the speed and the defense, it's all kind of meh. So he can play a decent left field out there for you. And Yelich actually has maybe a top five left-handed swing in this game. So he has that benefit over Jock despite not being able to play first. Base. Next up, we have Eloy Jimenez, another bona fide DH. And I know his hitting stats look like they're worse than maybe like a Soler, even though he's a little bit more even. He'll get over 100 contact versus left after a parallel or two. But Eloy has one of those swings that balls just fly off his bat. He's not gonna play the outfield. He might get hurt out there as you've seen him do in real life. He looks like a drunk uncle in this picture. He's gonna hit tanks like a drunk uncle in the backyard while you're throwing him 32 on soft toss. He'll be pimping him. Eloy's really good. And he's one of the better DH options. Speaking of DH options, one of the best ones, period, is Juan Soto. One of the best swings there are. A bunch of quirks. The problem is he's not really usable in right field. He's going to make some errors. He's going to let some runs score because of your, or to your opponent because of his fielding. So he's stuck at the DH role. That is the only reason that he is this low. Next up, we have Eugenio Suarez. Now, you're probably thinking, why is this guy above, you know, Juan Soto and some of the other names we have in this list? Eloy Jimenez. It's because although this looks like a DH bat off the top, he can actually play third base. And I know 37 speed is really, really bad. He'll play a decent defense over there with the 82 reaction and 77 fielding. So he'll play all right. You can also throw him at first, and it's a pretty good third or third and first base option. That power is way too elite, however. I know the speed isn't great, but he can play the field or DH, and having a little bit of versatility with the card makes you more likely to go get him. So Suarez is a beast. Next up is Paul Blackburn. You're probably looking at the stats, and you're like, what's wrong? Like, why is he this high on this list? Why is he close? to one of the best cards in Team Affinity. It's because 117 BB9, he's going to put the ball wherever you want it with a sinker and a cutter and a changeup. He has a pretty sneaky good delivery as well. If you guys used his all-star card last year, you know that he kind of super dots and putting the ball where you want is half the battle in this game sometimes. So Paul with a meta sinker cutter mix is going to be one of the best pitchers in the game. Back to the hitters, Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette is actually a beast. His biggest issue is that he only plays shortstop. He's not going to play great defense over there either. 75 fielding, 79 arm is not ideal and he's not very fast either. It all gets better obviously over time and at P5 he does get 80 with over 70 speed. So that definitely helps but his hitting attributes are way too good to ignore. 111, 118, 89, 98. Everything gets boosted after a couple parallels and his swing is like but uh Boba Shet is really really good and there's just a couple of a small few of better options but he's really nice next up Cedric Mullins the stats again they don't look ideal but he's gonna play great defense over there in the outfield with 91 fielding 80 for speed and you're like why is this guy better than Adelise? why is he better than Acuna well his swing is simply just significantly better this has one of the best swings that there are in the game period this is probably one of the more biased picks of the list but I'm a big Cedric fan, as you guys know, and I just think that he's going to do incredibly well for him if you give him a chance. Plus, they boosted his arm a little bit, so shout out to the shout out to the boost gods from Ramon. Next up, we got Wander Franco. I did not expect Wander to be this good, especially after seeing Adley, how they made him super one-sided, and Wander's card, either last year or the year before, was also super one-sided, so I didn't think it will be any good. However, 101, 125, 70, and 89. I wish the power was a little bit higher, but 70 can still get it done. He's going to play a really good second base. He's probably his best position is over there at second base, but shortstop's not horrible either with his reaction. Decent speed. His arm is just leaving a little bit to be desired, but the switch hitter, and he has an amazing swing. Wander is actually really, really good. And rounding out, probably the best division is Rafael Devers. The AL East is just stacked. I mean, their worst card was Stanton, so that's just going to show you how good this division is. But Devers, left-handed bat. He's going to destroy righties. That's what you see most of the time. His defense is fine enough over there at third. He also plays first, kind of like Eugenio, but he has a way better swing than Eugenio. I mean, have you guys ever used the Devers? Have you ever used the Devers? He's going to be riding that card a lot for all the home runs he hits. Number four on this list is going to be 97 overall Jeremy Pena. Jeremy Pena, World Series MVP. He almost won Rookie of the Year. He was really, really good. He replaced placed Carlos Correa over in Houston and they did not skip a beat. He plays shortstop, second base, and third base. He mashes lefties at P1. He gets 90 contact versus right, so that's pretty darn good enough versus righties. 99 speed, 99 fielding, 78 arm. Kind of sucks, but it's fine enough. He'll get it done. If you put him at any of his positions, he's going to be really good. And 99 speed early on, he's really good.
and I can't believe I'm saying this, but Javier Baez is the best fielding card in Team Affinity. I know it's weird. I don't like it. Javi strikes out on terrible pitches, but guess what? He got cool glasses on on this. He strokes lefties with 120 contact. He actually hits righties not too bad. 87, 96. Those get boosted at at least P3. He's going to be insane. 88 fielding, 91 arm, 74 speed. He's going to play a great shortstop. He also plays first, second, third, and left field. So there's versatility. He has decent speed. He's a great bat. He's a great fielder. I mean, he pretty much has everything you could ask for outside of the discipline. And honestly, it could have been way lower than 75. They kind of blessed them with it being as good as it is. Javi Baez. One of the three best team affinity cards. Number two is 97 overall, Dustin May. Dustin May is the best starting pitcher in team affinity. 106 hit per nine is one of the best in the game. He actually gets up to 111 at P5. That is insane for this early in the year. Sinker, slur, four seam, cutter, and circle change is pretty much an ideal pitch mix. He has outlier on the sinker. I wish it was the fastball, but that's just being nitpicky at this point. Dustin May is one of those crazy leg kicks. His control is way better than his pitches. There's cards in the past and 99 break. And the biggest issue with his live series cards every year is that he only gets like 70 break. This one has 99. And obviously that's going to help out quite a bit with his card. He's the second best card in the game. Not in the game. He's the second best card in Team Affinity and the best starting pitcher. And the final card is number one, Daniel Bard. He is one of the best relievers in the game, period. He's the 92, and it's funny that a 92 is the best card in this, but 103 hit per nine, 92K per nine. The issue is his BB9 is not great, but guess what? This is one of the best relievers in a game at a time where relievers are not very good. And I'll tell you what, there are not very many good ones. His outlier on a sinker, slider, changeup, that is going to be good enough. And when your PCI is that small, especially early on when you're still grinding these cards out, this is a great one to go get. I promise you, if you go get them, you'll have a good time. There are better options in general, but this one's going to probably last on your team the longest. And that's why I think he's the best of all of Team Infinity. Now, let me know what you guys think. I know there's a lot of hot takes on here. I kind of grouped a lot of guys together, but there's a lot of cards and not a lot of time to assess them. We've only been out in MLB to show 23 for two days. This is day two on Saturday. I'm not sure if you'll get this today or tomorrow, but we'll be doing more tier lists as the year goes on. One of the next ones we're going to be doing are the captains. We're going to be ranking them based on how good they are and the boost that they give to the team that they have and how good the team is around them. We're also going to be doing a bunch more in terms of just positional tier list as the year goes on we'll do sets we'll do overall there's a lot to look forward to so thank you guys so much and if you like the video make sure you like and subscribe down below i'll see you guys in the next one